in 2009, I believe October or November, um, there was a little village in Romania and basically um, they had no uh, priest at their church. There were people that were dying and there was no priest to do the service. Um, there was uh, bad babies getting born. There was no priest to baptize them. People could not do um, Holy Confession. They couldn't take obviously Holy Communion because there was no church service on a Sunday. Is it possible if you can send us a priest? Um, but he had no manpower. He couldn't send anyone. So anyway, one day, um, while the villagers are there, um, a car rocks up, out gets a priest. And he basically walks up to him and says, um, you know, they were, they were amazed. They were like, wow, you know, you, who sent you? You know, you're here now. And the priest said, you asked for a priest, I'm here. And the first thing he asked was, take me to the graveyards. There are people basically that have died and are unread, Okay. So they took him to the graveyards. He did, um, obviously he read the prayers that he had to do. Um, he baptized all, whether they were children or anyone else. Um, he basically baptized every, um, the people that needed baptism. Um, he did Holy Confession. He administered Holy Communion. He did what he had to do, but pretty much as a priest. Then he gathered everyone together and he said, I've come, I've done what I had to do, and now I have to leave. They were shocked, you know, they were waiting for a priest for so long. And they said, well, you've just come here. Why are you leaving? But he insisted, I came, I did what you wanted. Um, and now it's time for me to go. So off he went. And sure enough, the villagers, um, they went to see the patriarch and to thank him for sending a priest. So when they went to the patriarch, though, the patriarch told them that he had not sent a priest that he had clearly told him that he had no manpower. So what he did is he called his chancellor, okay? Just, just to ask pretty much whether he had sent anyone out. He looked into it. They asked a few other people. No one had sent a priest out. So the patriarch started being a bit of a, I guess, having a bit of a thought, wait a second, well, who is this um, priest that went to the village? And so what he said, what, what he asked the villagers was, well, if he was a, you know, a Romanian Orthodox priest or, you know, one of us, he would know what documents to fill um, and, you know, the paperwork, etc., etc. So they didn't have it on them right there. So what they've done is they've basically gone, pretty much brought them back. Now, the reason why um, the villagers couldn't understand, I guess, much of the writing is, it's a small village, and um, for those that know about small villages overseas, you know, they're uneducated. So, um, you know, they could tell it was um, Romanian, what he had written as far as the, um, the paperwork, but the signature was in a foreign language, okay? So the patriarch had a look at it. He was amazed. At the end, with a priest, that he had to be an Orthodox priest, okay? At the end... He knew exactly what he had done in the paperwork. And at the end was his signature. And guess what the signature was? Nectarios, Bishop of Pendapolis. The saint that I was talking about from the very beginning, Saint Nectarios, the Bishop of Pendapolis, heard their prayers in heaven. There were people that were deceased, that in heaven that had been unread. There was prayers about kids being unbaptized and not being able to do Holy Confession or Holy Communion. He came down from heaven, okay? Another indication that this life is not eternal, okay? The afterlife is eternal, okay? There's no reincarnation, okay? From this life, we go to the eternal. And he's come down and he's, he's basically done what they wish for. So... Um, the Romanians go now into this island of Egina in Greece every single year and um, they pay their respects to this saint, to his uh, holy tomb. Just so you can see what it looks like, that is the monastery and church in the island of Egina, an amazing church, and that is the holy tomb of Saint Nectario there. Now, Something else I want to tell you is when this saint, when he was alive, 
as he died, he, he performed a lot of miracles here, okay, um, while he was alive. But his first miracle when he died was this. When he was in Greece, in the hospital, his the, the clothing he had on him, the nurse took it off. Now, this is coming from the medical staff. Took off the clothing off um, St. Nectario, and right next to him, they placed it on the bed. Now, on that bed was basically another um, another patient, and he was um, he, he couldn't walk. He was paralytic. The moment they placed his garment onto the legs of the paralytic, he got up and walked. Yep, that is another miracle just there. He got up and walked. Um, now, there's so many more miracles. Um, the saint, his, his body, when it was in the tomb, um, and they took it out, it had not decayed. Okay? My father, actually, just to let you know, my father... Um, he, he's gone to Eina, to this island. And a lot of believers that have true faith, if you get down and place your ear on his tomb, a lot of people can hear his heart beating. Okay? But it doesn't happen to everyone. You need pure faith. Okay? If you're going to go there and say, oh, prove to me your heart's beating. If he does, that's a different story. But it doesn't happen to everyone. Okay? People that go with a pure conscience, pure heart, with love in their hearts, and they want to see the saint. That is another miracle um, that has happened. And as I said, my father's heard that. So thank you once again, and um, I'll be preparing the next miracle. God bless you all. Thank you.